Hello, guys. Hi, Freddy. Hello. Hi, Elena. Hi. Hi, Arely. Hi, Rodrigo. How are you? Very Hi. good. And you? I'm okay. I'm okay. It's been a long day today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Freddy. All right. Aha, Rodrigo. Y se nos había escapado. Yes, teacher. I, I, I was I was working. All right. Very hard. Okay. With other <laughs> activities. All right. I believe you and I forgive you. Very good. But I'm glad to see you again. Hi, Nidia. How are you today, Nidia? How was your day? It was interesting. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's nice. All right. Very good. And Elena, how was your day? How was your weekend? Mm, very good, actually. All right. That's nice. Nice to hear. And Arely, how? what about you? How was your day? Okay. Uh, today was my day off. Oh, okay. Well, that's a yep. good day then. <laughs> yep. That's right. All right. Very good. Okay. Brenda is not going to be with us because she's a little sick but she's going to be hopefully tomorrow, okay? She's okay, but she had to go to the hospital and everything, but she's fine. All right, so guys, uh, this is the last week of this course, so we're gonna wrap it up with talking and practicing with the writing section, all right? I just sent and I'm sorry I just sent it, but I've had meetings all day with the university and stuff, so it was like almost impossible to send it earlier. And I just finished the last, uh, the previous classes that I had before yours. But I sent the PPT anyway to the WhatsApp group, all right? Nothing, like we're not doing any kind of listening. We're doing like writing. Okay, so I'm just going to walk you through it. Uh, and it's very related to the last uh, section, which was writing. It's very like, it has a lot of connection with it, all right? So I'm just going to show it to you and then we can start working right away. Okay, so we say that in, in writing, of course, there are many features that we need to take into account for us to improve our writing skills, all right? Uh, we're going to begin talking with this practice with cohesion. We're going to talk about cohesion, and that's why I say it's very similar to the last part of the speaking section that we also talked about cohesion, all right? So, well, uh, to give Rodrigo, and uh, for Rodrigo to feel welcome again, can you read it for us, Rodrigo? <laughs> Thank you, teacher. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Um, practice with cohesion. Mm -hmm. Cohesion refers to ha to how well your writing uh, flows. Your writing flows, yes. Your responses on the TOEFL test will result. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> this my my dog. All right, he's, he's trying to, to, to practice as well, uh-huh. Yes, your responses on the TOEFL test will receive a, oh, I'm sorry, a I'm sorry, higher, I'm sorry. <laughs> a higher score? Uh, will receive a higher score if your paragraphs are cohesive. Cohesive, uh-huh. Cohesive, cohesive. Yes. You can achieve this by practicing the techniques, techniques Listed below. Right, very good. Okay, go on, Rodrigo, please. Okay, organizing ideas in a logical sequence. Sequence, Connect yes. Sequences. Connecting ideas with transactional expressions. Very good. Defining on common terms using parallel, parallel structures. Re rephrasing, rephrasing or replacing? Rephr Rephrasing or replacing keywords. Okay. And the last one being consistent in your use of thing, things, persons, person, and numbers. Excellent. Very good. Thank you, Rodrigo. So, if you notice, guys, this is pretty much the same as we what we had for the cohesion for the speaking section. All right. So. Um, it is really related, all right, and it's because we need to express our ideas in writing as well as in like speaking, all right? So we need to be, you know, comprehensible to when we, when we speak. So one of them is one of the things that we need to work on is organizing ideas in a logical sequence, all right? Sometimes 
we don't get lost when we're speaking, but also when we're writing. And that's why we need to learn how to organize our ideas, all right? A map, like a mind map is going to help us to work on it, or a web, if you want to call it that way, or a, like brainstorming, just like so you can storm your ideas out and put them in like an organized and logical sequence. It's going to help us to get or achieve this, all right? Another one is connecting ideas with transitional expressions. Again, so it's a very good idea for us to study those, like tons and tons of transitional expressions there are. Defining uncommon terms, like what we did last uh, week also, like if you have a word that is difficult for the audience to understand it, how would you define it, all right? And we were practicing that last week also using parallel structures, rephrasing or replacing keywords, all right, so we are not repetitive. And then I think for me, one of the most important ones is consistent in your use of tense, person and number, all right? Um, it's good, guys, for us to keep on practicing because we can see our own mistakes, if we make any, when we talk about tense, person and number, okay? When we write it, it's easier to identify our mistakes uh, more than when we're speaking, all right? Because we're speaking and we tend to forget what we said, all right? So that's why when we were talking about speaking, it's good to record your responses so you can listen to yourself again. But when you write, it's easier to check on your own stuff because you can go back and read it, okay? So we're gonna be talking a little bit about this. Let's see here. Hold on, guys. All right, hold on, just give me a second here. Okay, we also, like, I'm gonna take you, you're gonna have some exercises, all right? So you're gonna have this exercise versus connecting ideas using trans transitional expressions, all right? So here, for example, they give you the, um, the example here, and then you have to do this one so with, your, you, with your peers. And then they begin the uh, paragraph and everything. On the next slide, you have the choices. So, for example, here says number one. So that choice is giving you number one is so that earlier because although. Go back to number two, and then you, you're given four choices and see which one works better for you. That's how you're going to complete the first exercise. The same thing is going to happen for the second one that is right here. Uh, you can use for, like, let's say, number eight, you, the choices that are given to you is since, before, yet, and like, and you work it like that through the whole exercise. Then you have this one, connecting ideas using parallel structures. So read the example, and then you work on it right here. Then I want you to do this together with your partner. This is, like, related to, like, um, to the cohesion here and is writing concisely, okay? So here they give you examples of what inconcise and concise is like writing um, is, all right? So you kind of follow it. So I want you to read it when you get to this part with your uh, partner, and then you have, here's also part of the, the reading, and then you have this exercise, all right? So I think we'll have enough time to work on it, guys. So the first part is not very difficult, it's just you need to read it, together with your partner and then decide which is the best choice, all right? Do you have any questions, guys, about what we're going to be doing today? Hi, Robert, hi, Evelyn. All right, and Astrid and Arely. Do you have uh, questions, guys? No, no questions? Okay. Hello. Uh, yes, Robert. Yes, good evening, I have a question. Basically, we will only have to read uh, the reading section and answer the, the questions. That's right. I mean, um, okay. I don't know how long ago you just, I mean, you got in, but what I was saying is that this topic is, re it relates a lot to the last topic of last week of cohesion, all right? So organizing ideas, connecting ideas, defining uncommon terms and all those, all right? So here, what, what, what I want us to do is to write, like go and work on it right away because we already talked about that last week. All right, so just when you get to this part right here, Robert, this is the reading part that I want you to do with your partner because it talks about practice with writing concisely. And then you can see the examples of inconcise and concise paragraph or passages, all right? So when you finish reading that, then you're free to do this one, this exercise that you have here, okay? 
Okay, thank you. All right, okay. So I'm gonna send you right now, guys, to your rooms. So you may start working right away. So you're working in pairs. Mm, Maribel is not in today.
such as knitting. Um, before. Yeah, before. Mm -hmm. Okay, nine. All this changed for her in 1772. Um, how Especially? was it? Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. However. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. ten. Then, uh, her astronomer brother, William, took her to live with him mm. in England. Um. Then, uh, mm. Hi, Adele. Hi. Are you working by yourself? No, I am with, uh, I don't know what is the name, but I Rodrigo. have, yep. Ah, but he was working with you. He just probably had a um, internet connection, I guess, probably. Yeah, because uh, we we were talking like uh, one minute ago. And then he I disappeared. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. I was shaking my, my, my PPT because right now uh, we are working in the number one that is SSI W3. Okay. I think that the number the number one uh, we don't need to to change anything because uh, in this sentence we are using the past tense and we have indicated uh, the past tense and then we have waited that is in past tense as well. All right, so right now you're working. Can you see my screen right now? Just let me verify you because right now I am, yep. So you were working with him on W3 then? Yes. Okay. And you finished this one. W1, you finished it. No, this one, no. Yeah, uh, because uh -huh. this one. Okay, just let me. No idea. I haven't working on it. All right. Just let me work. <laughs> yeah, okay. because uh, he uh, he was sharing the PPT and then ah. I think that. He, but just let me move for the another one. Okay. That is the number uh, the PPT number three, right? The one I sent today. Yeah, but there isn't the page number three. That is uh, W W one. Yeah, that's right. No. W one connecting ideas using transitional expressions. Okay. So in that case, we have but we have this only one sentence that it that it said, "Who live close to campus can enjoy a leader leader." Really relied. I don't know what is the correct pronunciation. Hold on, hold on. I think I moved it. Oh no, what am I doing? Oh no, hold on. Hold on, give me a second. I think. Who live close to campus can enjoy. That one, like right? a literary walk to their classes, right? That's the one? Yes. It seems that a student don't want to give up using their cars. So that's, that, I mean, the beginning of it is this. Hold on, my goodness, I'm going backwards. The beginning of yeah. it is the other page. This one right here. Did you have this one? Connecting ideas using transitional expressions from one to seven. Yes, I have it. So basically on this one, I have to work in the, in the another part, right? Right, yes, because the choices are given here on a slide four. Ah, okay, so basically we have to work on those two pages. That's right, yes, yes, before the W3. Ah, okay, yeah. All right, yeah. 
Yeah, this is uh, that was my confusion because, right. uh, yeah, I couldn't understand how I can get the ideas. All right, yeah. So you have yeah. it here, yes. All right, yeah. so I think, okay, so in this one, W1, you have from one to six on the next slide, you have number seven. That's the one you were reading. And then you have the choices. All right. Oh, okay. And then you have question from question eight to question 12. You have the small passage, the reading passage, and then you have the choices. Ah, okay, okay, right. I got okay. it. Okay. Yes, right All now right. I got it. <laughs> okay, good. So okay. Um, do you want me to move you? Let's see if uh, Rodrigo's about to be here. Hold on. Uh, yeah, he just got in. Okay, so I'm going to send Rodrigo back to like here so he, he, keep, he can keep on working with you. Yeah, in some cases the internet connection is bad. Yeah. Sometimes it happens to me as well. Yeah, I know. I think it happens to all of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. But um he's he's gonna be back soon. Okay. All right. In case and you don't wanna work by yourself, let me know and then I'll move you to another group, okay? Sure. Okay, thank, thank you. Honey. Thank you. Bali. Uh, Monterey Bali should. Since it says soft values are hard to put a monetary value. Whereas students who live close to campus can enjoy a leisurely walk to the classes. Are you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's A. Let's see, seven. Seven, something. It seems that students don't want to give up using their cars. Unfortunately, as a result, for instance, specifically. I think it's unfortunately. Unfortunately. 
Mm -hmm. And between unfortunately or as a result. As a result of what? Because for the previous reason, the student doesn't want, doesn't want to use the cars. They prefer walk to the university. Mm, no, it no. The idea, the idea was that the students that live near to campus can mm -hmm. uh, walk and they can enjoy the view or the uh, the exercise. Mm -hmm. And it's like a conclusion, I think, in that um, they don't use the the university shuttle or mm -hmm. they don't use bicycles or they don't want to walk so they they don't use that because unfortunately it seems that they prefer to drive their cars that's right mm. Mm, I, I I'm sorry, but I understood that the students uh, prefer war, walk or ride their bicycles. Nidia, can you? I'm sorry, Nidia, can you go back? Go back no, where? There, there, where you are right now. Not only in this. Not only is this good exercise, it is also easier to find a space to leave a bicycle than to find a parking space. So what they are talking here about, Evelyn, is that they, are, they have so many choices that they can do, like they can leave their bicycles because they do that on a parking spaces. They can uh, like, they can like have leisure walks on the campus, all right? So it gives it, what it's talking about here is like they, students could could do many things or could have many things to like be able to do but unfortunately they don't want to give up using their cars because they are too lazy although mm. the campus offers so many other options they still don't want to give up their cars mm -hmm. oh, right? okay. that's why Nidia it. is giving that choice of unfortunately right Nidia yes yeah, it's mm -hmm. like saying, okay, I'm giving, I'm offering this class, for example, they're giving these classes for free and all that. Unfortunately, I don't have time to take it. Although it's mm -hmm. a good idea, but I don't have, you know, time to take these classes, for example. So although they're mm -hmm. giving me many choices and everything for students to keep healthy in this case, but unfortunately, they just don't want to give in, you know, give up with their cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I got it. Thank you. All right, very good. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it's it's A for seven. Miss. Hi, tell me. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, we want to know if, what is correct in number three. What is what? Excuse me. In number, number three. three. Uh huh. We have two options. Yes. Um. So my mathematics teacher requires to work on a set of problems individually and we put so we can compare our answers with a classmate mm -hmm. or the other options is like, like it is, but okay. we change, we just like eliminate them mm -hmm. and we live and working together on those answers. Can see my math teacher requires us to work as a set of problems individually, compare our answers with it, and then ah, all right. Compare comparing our answer with a classmate and working together on those answers that is not. Oh, so you, what you want to do, Freddy, is like add ing to all of the verbs then? Yes, follow the same uh, tense of the verb. In the uh -huh. two but would it make like would it make sense if you say my mathematics teacher requires us to working on a set of problems individually, comparing our answers with a classmate, and then working together on those answers that they don't agree? Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I was thinking. All right. So if you wanna like what they are trying to to use here is the same um, structure here, right? The same parallel structure. So in that case. 
to work, it wouldn't, it would not work if you say to working. Right, so that's oh. choice. Right? So, oh, so the answer is, and then work together. Excellent, excellent, Elena, very good, yes. My mathematics teacher required us to work on a set of problems individually, compare our answers with a classmate, leave it, leave it the way it is, and then work together on those answers that did not agree. Okay, we go, the first verb that we that, uh -huh. is in infinitive. That's right. Okay. All right, because that one you cannot, you cannot change it to working. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. We were complicating. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> then yeah. The but rest. you know what, Elena and Freddy, this is the way they work because that's what they want you to do to complicate your life <laughs> a little bit. Because, I mean, if you look at it that way, it's so easy to say, and then working, because the other two verbs are not being used in ing form. Okay. All right. So that one is. You know, you leave it out like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Number four. Yes. It, Bryce Canyon is 56 square miles of towering pinnacle. Pinnacles. And with ero ero eroded. Firms that are grotesque. Bryce can choose one. And maybe just an eroder forms are grotesque. You're getting it, Elena, but it's like you need to move the word, the, the adjective. You need to move the, the adjective grotesque somewhere else, but mm -hmm. adding and just like you did. Um, you know what? It's not that it's wrong the way it's written, but it's way to... Um, learn <laughs> it doesn't sound natural you know what i'm saying so it's not that it's incorrect the way they have mm -hmm. like written it there but if you could modify it a little bit try to work with the adjective grotesque where would you put it instead of there so you can change it a little bit but not change the meaning mm -hmm. okay <laughs> Morning. Uh, Morning, Copinacles. Mm -hmm. Of telling Copinacles. Like what? The towering pinnacles are grotesque because of the you're complicating it too much Elena <laughs> <laughs> you know what think, let's 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 try to think of a, a like an easier example um let's see uh you have a dog right Elena yes okay so tell me two adjectives about your dog you can say what's the name of your dog Michaela okay so you say Michaela is fun and um I don't know and, and very pretty <laughs> all right so she is a fun and pretty dog yes. all right so dog you put it at the end you don't say like for, okay this is what i'm trying to say Michaela is a fun and cute let's say a fun and cute dog so you're taking the two adjectives followed by like you're joining those two adjectives followed by the conjunction and and you're telling me what Michaela is. In this case, she's a dog. All right. Mm -hmm. So here we can say Brian's Canyon is 56 square miles of towering pinnacles. All right. Okay. And grotesque what? Eroded horns. There you go. 
all right so ah, oh. you, um, you eliminate with and that in spanish especially siempre estamos diciendo por qué tal cosa que es tal otra right so that we always la metemos para all right, that she is yeah. my dog, that he is my best friend, that she is the teacher. All right, so it sounds mm -hmm. okay, but it doesn't flow naturally. All it right? sounds okay, but in Spanish. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. So here we say, and we see it like okay, because in a way that's like our language, all right? So we say, uh, Brian's Canyon is 56 square miles of towering pinnacles and grotesque eroded forms. And we're mm -hmm. saying exactly the same thing, but we sound fancier because we're joining two sentences together and telling the what is grotesque and tower of pinnacles at the end. What is it? The eroded forms. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. So next we did exercise. What do you have for now? The, the questionnaire indicates that many students prefer to study in the library rather than home. Mm. No. <laughs> We're complicating again. I think so. The questionnaire indicated that many students wanted to study in the library rather than home. I don't know if it could be this one. Uh huh. It's that many students uh, rather study in the library. But than why home. did you change rather for wanted? Because it sounded nice. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Why did you change rather? I mean, you changed wanted for rather. Why? I think that wanted is not necessary, and rather is because uh, we are showing. You're giving a uh, choice. Options. Two choices, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, yeah, that sounds so, good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, because you're you're like giving two choices, so rather it's okay. All right, but there's something else missing. A little word. <laughs> that is not necessary too. Which one? Indicate. Mm. Then you're missing question. you're missing a preposition. It has many students. About mm. You see, you're using the preposition in the library, right? Mm -hmm. Rather right. than at home. Okay, there you go. And this is very complicated. Mm -hmm. It's so easy that I it's know, complicated. I know, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the Usually preposition. we don't think like the most, the more, Obvious answer. I know, I know it's so true. What you're saying is so true. Then you're thinking, oh man, I'm so stupid. I didn't see that coming. Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> it's like obvious, you know, but it's so obvious that you don't see it. Right? <laughs> so in right. the library, rather at home than at home. At home. Than at home. Mm -hmm. So for the number two. Uh huh. This experience. So, um, guys, when we talk about parallel structure with this, you have to, in, for example, in number one, you have to somehow, because I cannot really tell you how, <laughs> somehow you, you need to identify that what is being misused here is a preposition. So if a preposition is used at a place, I need to use another preposition at the other place that is being mentioned. All right. So here, yes. for example, number three is they are using, uh, they were using, for example, the infinitive or the bare infinitive, which is the other one, right? Because in the where it says compare, they're using a bare infinitive. It's not 
shown, but you know it's a very infinitive. All right, so everything oh. has to match. Yeah, so my mathematics yes. teacher required us to work on a set of problems individually to compare, but omit it because it's a very infinitive. Our answers with a classmate mm -hmm. and then work, very infinitive again. Structure means that everything has to be the same. Primero tenemos que identificar okay. de cuál es el, en qué se están concentrando ellos. En infinitives, como por ejemplo el número tres, en prepositions, like number one. Mm -hmm. All right, so llegar a identificar el qué, en qué se están enfocando, that's the key. Once you like oh. see it, then you say, ah, y Elena los, I mean, when I said a preposition, Elena took a second and said at, the, at home. Right? So, because she saw that in the library, and then you said, okay, so I need another preposition before the place, which is home. Okay, so at home. You don't say in the home. You don't say on home. You don't say by home. You say at home. Right? Well, I have the number two. Uh -huh, let's see. <laughs> From this experience, I learned not only to read the instructions more carefully, but also to excellent, pay attention. Excellent, Elena. You got it. Very yeah. Oh, it's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's easy. <laughs> very good. Yes. That's that's what it is, Elena. Very good. Good job. Y antes que tenía, what did you have for number two before? Or you didn't have um, anything? Yes, we eliminate but. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> no, you see? Entonces, lo primero, Freddy, I don't know if you get what I'm, like, what I'm trying to say here, Fred, but what you need to do is and I know it's a little bit complicated again here porque tenemos todo el tiempo, ¿verdad? Pero en el examen it's like, oh my goodness, right? But that's why you need to practice before you go to take this test. But once you identify what they are like really focusing on, then it's easier for you to understand. And Elena just like proved what I'm telling you, all right? Because when I was explaining, she was doing number two and she identified <laughs> infinitive. And then she saw that the other infinitive was not there. And you need to, and to pay attention, right? Also to pay attention to safety features, right? Okay. Okay. You see how I'm fun it is? Man, here is not yeah. fun. <laughs> <laughs> the number, for example, we we are using singular. That's right. It has to be. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So in that case, that's that's why, in my very personal opinion, guys. When I'm gonna stop sharing your screen, I'm gonna share mine uh, okay. for a second. When I was telling you guys that for me, going back to the first slide, which says being consistent in your use of tens, person, and number is one of the basic rules that you need to follow. In this case, you need to identify if the prepositions are being used correctly, if the infinitives, everything that you guys know already because you know it, all right? They play with it, they play with your mind and they omit little words just to make you miserable. All right. Okay. So I think that's like one of the key issues that you guys need to concentrate on. Tense, person, number, and all those grammar rules that we knew somehow, we learned them like a while ago, but they always come back to us, all right? So that's why it's very important. All right, so you need to follow, okay, are they talking about singular here? Are they talking about number? Are they talking about tense? Right, so that's how you need to like work on these weird things. <laughs> it's like a, like, like a game. It is, it is. So yeah. you have to identify. <laughs> yeah, you have to identify it. Yeah, that's right. You need to think how they think, which is complicated. <laughs> yeah right but i think i mean in a way guys maybe it's like having these courses is a good idea because you're exposed to this and then you realize things that perhaps you did not realize before all right yes. so i think i mean it's a good prep but the idea yeah. here is for you to like to continue like getting ready for it if you want to take this test all right i have just one question but not of this but yes to take the TOEFL, we have to make like another course or we can take it like like finishing this Yeah, one. you can take it. I mean, we don't offer it, Elena. 
but yeah, like for example, Centro Cultural offers it. Uh, mm. So you just go and pay it. They will, oh, okay. they will not ask you if you're prepared, if you have taken any preparation. I mean, they don't, I mean, if they, you go, you pay it and they give you the date and then you take it. They just share it to you and... That's right. Luck. Yeah, and good luck, yes. Mm -hmm. And oh, then you okay. can take it as many times as you want to. All right. And it's so, very expensive or? Uh, it's $65, Selena. About oh, 60, okay. 65, about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I think you can take it like, for example, you did not, you, you failed it. And then you, you can take it like mm, within like the following month or so, because they want to give you time to prepare. But oh, it's okay. up to you if you want to take it next, the following day after like knowing what you, the score was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All oh, right. Okay, All right. Thank you. <laughs> You're very <laughs> welcome. Okay, guys. So let's go because it's 9 50, 56. I have the other class. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, guys, I don't know if you were able to finish. I'm just going to quickly share the answers with you for the first, for this exercise from one to seven. And you can just write your answers or check your answers for number one is letter C. For number two is letter A. For number three is letter A. For B, for sorry, for four is B. For five is D. For six is B, for seven A, for eight D, for nine it's B, for 10 is A, for 11 is D, and for 12 is B, all right? Then with these ones that I was just working with Elena and Fred, uh, I'm just gonna give you like the answers here and check if you have them right we can like work on it tomorrow a little bit if you want to it says i'm just going to tell you here the questionnaires uh the questionnaire indicated that many students wanted to study in the library rather than at home at is what you were missing here number two it says from this experience i learned not only to read instructions more carefully but also to pay attention to safety features, all right? Number three, my mathematics teacher required us to work on a set of problems individually, compare our answers with a classmate, and then work together on those answers that did not agree. And the last one, Bryce Canyon is, 50, is 56 square miles off Tower and Vina. Um, Pinnacles and grotesque eroded forms, all right? So as I was telling Freddy and Elena, what you need, for example, in these parallel structures, that's why they are called parallel because they have to be like the same kind of thing. So what you have to do, and a key here, if like if, I mean, it worked for Elena, so I think it might work for all of you, is to identify what they are focusing on. For example, here on number one, they were focusing on the preposition in, all right? So you have a preposition in, and then you have the place in the library. You have another place here, and you're missing a preposition. Which preposition belonged? In this case, is at. You don't say in home, on home, over home, by home. You say at home, all right? For example, number three, they are talking about, they're focusing on infinitives and very infinitives. That's why you have to work, compare, and then work. You cannot write ing because it wouldn't work the first one. You cannot say the teacher required us to working. The day is sabe que está mal. All right, so they wouldn't be concentrated on that. So in a way, guys, we need to find like keys that will help us individually to find like to get the answers right. So I think if we do that, we're gonna succeed on this test. I need to go. I have the other class. Uh, we'll keep on talking tomorrow about the writing process I'm, and I'm going to um, show you like a map mind then like brainstorming and stuff so you can like use that when you're writing uh, so you can get a better score on your TOEFL test. All right.
thank you so much guys for being with me tonight please try to be here with me the rest of the week this is the last week and then we're done all right so thank you so much have a nice evening bye bye, bye. 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 bye.